Alright, so for my next two videos here, I'm going to do a strat neck and a tally neck. I've got my quarter saw and piece of maple. I'm going to do a reverse CBS strat neck. I think that's just a really neat looking neck in terms of how it looks. And I'm going to do a standard tally neck. This is a quarter saw and piece of maple. I'm going to use some basic tools with this, a, a router with a fence, you know, a table router and a fret saw. And that's how I'm going to be making this neck for the strat and then with the tally neck I'll put a fretboard on this and show you a different way of constructing a tally neck but I really wanted to make a one piece strat neck I think that's really a, a great thing to do uh, in terms of construction technique and skills it doesn't require a whole ton of tools so I think most bait guys can basically do this so I'm going to lay this out on both sides because it's really important that when you're making this neck that you got the center line on the front and on the back that way when you're cutting your truss rod it matches up to where you're going to be putting your center dots it's critically important that you've got the neck flattened correctly and sized properly so this has been planed down to about an inch and then I've got a flat on each side and when I'm drawing my center line then I've got it perfectly centered through the whole board so the center line is key important but it's also keyly important that on this type of construction technique you've got a flat edge to do most of your marking with so it's got you know a perpendicular line to the center line all right so for the first step what I want to do is drill out where the truss rod is going to go on the back side here so it's about 18 inches long and what I want to do is drill out with the drill press first that way I've got a lot less resistance as I'm routing so I'm going to take a 1 8 inch bit drill this out to the approximate depth and then I'm going to go back with a 3 16 bit and drill it out as well. So the router is always going to follow then the path of least resistance in the piece of wood and if I've got this drilled out first it's going to have a lot less resistance. So I'm doing this on the drill press because it's easy but you can also do this with a hand drill as well. All right, next I got my fence set up here. And I've built a little bit of a jig for my router with the fence. And now I've got a 3 16 bit and I'm gonna go back and forth here and route slowly. And then next I'll replace that with the quarter inch bit and finish up so I get a perfect straight line. So years ago, Stu Mack used to make this handy fret ruler. One side is 25 and a half fender, other side here is Martin 25 and four. Then we got Gibson short and then a 25 inch Paul Reed Smith scale. So what's great is you just line this up along the center line and mark where the fret's going to be and then you go back and cut. So what I'll do is I'll mark each fret here and then since I've got a flat side here, I know how to draw the line going across. I like usually doing these V's. So then I've got a point. Drill from corner to corner here and you'll see exactly where your drill bit point has to go. If you're using brad point bits or fastener bits, you know, you get it lined up right on that center and you've got it. So I'm going to go through and mark each one of these for the dots. I've got my approximate center and it's pretty close. 
So at the 12th fret, you're going to do something different. You're going to measure here how far the centers are in. And you're going to mark the center line of the fret. And then you're just going to mark, I think these are probably about a quarter, look like a half inch in. So I'm just going to do an approximate half inch in here. So here, we're going a half inch in, we're going to mark the dots. So the 12th fret is the only fret you really got to do something different with. So here I've got all the fret markers laid out. I'm going to take this to the drill press next. Drill out each spot where the fret marker is going to go. So I'm going to drill the center ones out first, and then I'll do the 12 last. I've got a Fostner bit here, a quarter inch Fostner bit, and I'm using a walnut dowel rod to do this. So. So when I drill out the 12s here, I gotta go a little bit deeper because of the curvature of the fretboard. So I'm gonna crank this up about half a turn and go back and drill. All right, next step here is I'm actually gonna cut and route. So I've got a double stick tape here. I'm gonna use double stick tape from here all the way to the head of the neck. I don't want this moving at all, so I'm gonna use a lot more tape than I probably need to. But I'll make sure that the template doesn't move. In case there's any movement in the neck, I'm going to clamp this here and let it sit for about 24 48 hours to make sure any movement, you know, just goes out naturally. Always want to make sure that your wood doesn't move after you cut and route it. All right, next we're going to do is take the punch here and punch out where I'm going to drill. These punch sets are available at Harbor Freight. They're really, really useful. Next, I got a Brad point drill bit and I'm going to drill in each one of these holes. This is a 10 millimeter bit. Always make sure you're using a backing board so you don't get any blowout on the bottom here. Alright, so the next thing here is actually to cut the frets and I get a fret saw and I get a straight edge and I line this up and I just go down about an eighth of an inch and I want to make sure I stay along my straight edge here but you cut it by hand slowly Maybe go down a little bit more than an eighth. But you get it on each side, and it's actually pretty simple. The straight, edge, the straight edge keeps my saw vertical. It doesn't move, and when you press the fret in, then it's straight. And there you go, you just keep moving down. Here's another angle, same fret saw, moved it down to the second fret.
All right, next we're going to insert the walnut inlays. And I've got a quarter inch dowel rod of walnut here. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this up into small quarter inch pieces and then just glue them in here. So I'm going to go take this to my little bandsaw and cut that up. I'm not going to show that. All right, so next I'm going to insert the keys. I've got all these cut up. Cut up a bunch, but those look the best. I'm just going to take a dab of glue. Make sure that there's no dust from where I slotted in. And just a little bit of a dab. I probably don't even need this much. I'm going to use actually a screw here. So I can get a controlled amount and it's just a drop of glue. And probably even a drop might be too much, but it's just plain glue. Just gonna spread the glue out here then. Alright, so I got little drops of glue in. This is a bigger key, so I'm gonna knock it in here. Find the big ones first and do them in the spot where I did the deepest drill, which was the 12th. Just pound them in. Alright, here we are a couple hours later. And what you're gonna wanna do is just cut the key off with a you know a thin curved saw you know be careful as you're going around the fretboard you know this is a flush cut saw what you want to do with the saw is just slowly move it around the edge so you don't have that kind of like any tear out or any kind of weird spots on the end where it pulls the wood out because then if you get tear out on this wood the key won't look correct uh, sitting with the fretboard so I kind of go from all different angles and just saw these out and these top frets are kind of hard to do because you don't have much room on the one side but there you go I got no tear out and it looks pretty good So cutting the nut is a little bit more difficult. You need a couple more tools. So what I've done is I've cut on both sides of the line here. What you do is take a chisel and break out the wood, and then use the Stumac nut file to get this flat. You just kind of go back and forth and pull the wood out here. And there's two edges on this file. One's rough and one is fine. You get the rough side. You just start going back and forth to clean this up. You want this area nice and level. There you go. It's all cut. I'll clean it up when I get to actually doing the nut, but for right now, it's a good rough, rough cut. All right, next thing we're gonna do here is cut the face of the neck off where the tuners go, kind of that scoop out. And what you need is a feeler gauge and you just go in the middle, you get up right to the nut and you get that profile. Then what you do is you transfer that profile to your neck. So I probably should have done this uh, while I still had the face the neck square and it would have been easier to do but I'm going to show you something cool about fender necks so just get my pencil and just trace this through and what's really cool about fender necks is that these two points are flat so I got a 90 degree surface so what I'll do is I'll come up here and just cut very slowly and walk this around. So I, like I said, with this video I'm gonna use just basic tools. This is my basic Craftsman bandsaw, you know, 10 inch bandsaw. I've got a new blade on here. It's a quarter inch, it's pretty stiff. And what I'll do is I'll cut just slightly above the line and then go back and clean this up with my router and my sander. So 
So there you go. Cut is definitely not perfect, but it's pretty consistently flat as I came through the wood here. So you can see that beautiful end grain. What I'll do is I'll take this on my sander now and clean up the edge here. All right, so next on the headstock, so I'm just gonna take a sander and sand any lines out. So there's a kind of a dig right there I gotta get out, and then there's some little roughness right here. I'm just gonna take this and go back and forth and sand for a while, make sure I get it flat. Cutting actually went pretty well, so yeah, it's really gonna be just getting this scratch out. So the end of my truss rod is like 1964s. So to get this to fit properly, I've got to drill out just a little bit on the bottom here to get this to fit correctly. So I've happened to got a 1964 bit here. I'm just going to go in and just, just kind of slowly clean this up. And that should be it. Yep, that's it. Just a slight cleanup. So now next I've got a quarter inch strip of walnut. And I've just got to essentially glue that in. Next here is to route the end of the truss rod channel. And I've got an eighth inch bit. One side I'm going to go normal and then i got to put a backing board on the other. Here you don't want to cut this beforehand because you'll get some blowout like I hit here when I cut it. So we're out the first side, put a backing board, we're out the second side. All right, so I got it trimmed down, but I want to leave it a little bit thick so I got something to press when I'm clamping. I've got my truss rod set. I'm going to take a bead of glue on each side. I'm going to use my finger to spread it out. Definitely don't want to over glue here. You don't want the glue in the channel so that it messes with the functionality of the rod. But you just want enough. So. Nice is when you use the glue, it fattens up a little bit. Make sure it's in. I'm just going to inspect it on each side. Get my clamps. Clamp it down. Didn't really tighten these clamps a whole bunch, just kind of use it to just get everything slightly snug. So everything's looking good here. I'll let this dry. All right, next here we'll just take a hand planer and clean this up. All right, one of the last steps here is to actually sand down the fretboard to the right radius. This is a 7.25 radius fretboard leveler. 
And what I'm going to do is just sand back and forth here. And the trick to this is start here and move your way down, taking shorter strokes here to get this level. Since it's wider than here, it's going to take a lot longer to sand. So an old trick is to actually just go back and forth and mark the frets on the outside with a pencil. They actually can see where you're sanding and when you know you got a level board. So this will probably take about a half hour, so I'm not going to film the whole thing. I'm just going to do a little bit. It's always key to go back and forth and vacuum up so you can see where you're at. So when I start standing here, I start with 120 grit, and then I move up to 320. I've got two different rolls that I use back and forth. So I just sanded this with 120. I probably spend about 15 minutes using 120, and then I use about another 10, 15 minutes uh, with 320, and essentially you're just going back and forth and cleaning it up. I don't use an aggressive paper like an 80 or 60 because then you actually scratch the board and that's a real pain to get out sometimes. So I stick with uh, you know 120 and 320 and I get a pretty good finish. You know this is all done now. Beautiful. You can see the grain lines and the figure. So the next step here is going to be drill the side dots and then carve that, drill the holes and finish. So I'll do that in another video.